Salutations everybody, it is Maddie here today with my review for Scorn. This review will be structured a bit differently because it's going to be more of a story of my experience rather than a full top to bottom analysis of the story, gameplay, sound design, all that stuff, which we will still get into, but it will be, as I said, structured differently because Scorn is a game I wanted to love and it had its moments where I was right there. I was right there, but there were things holding me back, the game itself failing me, and it really, really tested my patience as a game reviewer. It was a super unique experience for me, so I want to go ahead and share that all with you here today. Remember, Scorn is available day one in Game Pass, where you can play it as a part of your subscription service. But otherwise, let's not delay any further in what is yet another October review. There are many more on the way, so do keep your eyes peeled because there are other things coming. But now, let's dive in to score. So this is a first-person horror game based around puzzles and solely puzzles. As you're dropped into effectively a labyrinth with no context whatsoever, you're left to wander and pretty much get lost immediately. I really respect Scorn, okay? I love how it's true to itself in those opening hours, but as it opened up more and more, not only was my playthrough plagued with bugs and glitches, but it started to lose its sense of identity that it held so strongly onto in the opening half of the game, and it was pretty soul-crushing. What spoke to me most about Scorn was its rich visual design. It is absolutely phallic. That's because of its H.R. Geiger inspired art direction. For those who don't know, it's a very sexual art style, if you will. You know, not the hot stuff. Like when you look at me, you're like, damn, that dude's attractive. I wonder what. No, none of that. It's more like the gross ins and outs, the squishing, crushing, the uh, organic <laughs> nature, if you will of that act, that performance. And this game really does emulate it well, and it fits the world well, and given its gory nature, its attention to detail, again, I really respect Scorn. It very much is an artiste game. It has beautiful, demented architecture. There's no hide, no guidance, no eventual nudging when you're lost onto the next objective, nothing. It calls all of its attention to the world around you. There's hardly any music. There's no voice acting, just the soft pitter patter of your footsteps, croaking of nearby creatures, the occasional squishing of organs, and the creaking of a crumbling society. It's all in on the long lingering tension, the atmosphere that's there, and that atmosphere Atmosphere is good. It reminds me a lot of a PSP game I played when I was a kid that creeped me the hell out called Rengoku Tower of Purgatory. It's that game there where that same character design pops up, this subhuman like character design, this awkward silence. Although Rengoku, for those who don't know what this game is, is much more action packed and it wasn't a very good game either. It's still one that always stuck with me because it freaked me out as a kid. Just the way some characters would stand there in isolated hallways it kind of reminded me of your first encounter with Darth Sion and KOTOR 2 and the Harbinger like that sense of unease that awkwardness this game gives me a lot of that energy and that's a good thing I love 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 the atmosphere the tension it's palpable and the art direction so what don't I like about Scorn well it's not necessarily a dislike to answer your question it's the story of a reviewer who was incredibly thorough and found a lot of issues on his way to the finale, which I unfortunately could not reach. So let me get into that. As I'm progressing through Scorn, it's all about the puzzles. To get to point A to point B to point Z, you need to solve puzzles. And I like how the game's structured. You get dropped into a region, a maze effectively, and some of these areas are bigger than they probably should be, but you're just wandering, looking for the first key to the puzzle, and everything slowly falls into place, and you start to recognize the true attention to detail in Scorn's level design. But then I hit a bug, a bug that would not allow me to progress my game. But as you'll see here in the footage, I needed to rotate this particular puzzle piece here, 
and I could not because in order for me to move on to the next stage in the game, this puzzle needed to be completed. Make no mistake, Scorn has zero optional content, zero side content. So everything is connected to the main line story of the game. And if that doesn't work, you can't finish the game. So I reloaded my experience and I tried again. It didn't work. Now this highlights another issue with the game that once I got past this bug, popped up a number of times. And that's the god awful save system. All right, we're here at the dingy home setup. I apologize for the awful webcam, but I wanna show you all in real time what I mean about Scorn's save system being an absolute failure. So we're here at the main menu. You can see it's happening in real time. Fingers are twitching. We're here, this is all live, all right? Because I don't want anyone to think I'm fibbing about the game or whatever, because there are some maniacs who will think so. Uh, we clicked select slot, so you know what save slot I am loading, which is the first one here uh, at three hours and 55 minutes. So boom, we're gonna select that. We're gonna hit continue, because this game does have an auto save feature. It's extremely spotty, but after a brief loading screen here, you'll see where I'm gonna pop up, which I do like that despite how good the game looks, it loads pretty quickly. And yeah. Here we are. This is my safe slot. This is not a part of the game. This is not an artistic design choice. I fell through the, through the floor. Originally, it was kind of like a jade green. You see I'm twitching out now. Originally, it was kind of like a jade green. Uh, then it turned gray. Now we're just in the infinite abyss at the base of Unreal Engine, it would seem. What I'm going to do now is pause my game. And I'm going to click the load game, which you can barely read right now. But what you can read is my playtime here on the top right, which says... Three hours and 55 minutes. That's important to note because as you scroll through all of the saves that the game automatically does for you that I have no option but to follow and the occasional invisible autosave, you'll see there are gaps here. Right here, playtime, four minutes is the first save. Then afterwards, the second save, 58 minutes. So we're talking an almost hour gap already. Then it picks up a little bit. We got about a 20 minute gap here, a seven minute gap here. This is fine because then you could reload your save and you could play the game from there and that's that's fine. Then my next save is an hour and six minutes later, which I think is unacceptable. And now you're seeing here the latest save I can go back to is act three at two hours and 28 minutes when my playtime is at three hours and 55 minutes. So we're talking nearly half of the playtime I, I would be putting into the game in total would now be rededicated to getting back to where I once was and hoping that nothing bugs out in the process because along all of these acts, there were things stopping me, whether they be input bugs where I'd hit the controller but it would only work on keyboard or progression halting bugs that would make me reload the game or dying and reloading way further back. I swear I put more hours into this game than actually is necessary and I probably would have been done with the game if it didn't break so much and I wasn't constantly reloading things for things out of my control. So this is Scorn, a game that I very much like when it's actually clicking, when it's actually working, but that it continues to fail me constantly. And you saw it here in real time. I don't know what they were thinking with this one, but this game does not have a manual save system and it has the most spotty auto save system that goes on particular objectives being completed. Do you wanna just sign off for the night and not lose your progress? You can't. With Scorn, it is a game that as you wander around and try to find your way if you hit load game and you look at your last saves and auto saves sometimes you'll see a 30 minute gap there and go oh boy i just i'm, I'm kind of getting ready to tap out but as that gap in your last save increases and increases because it's a puzzle game so sometimes you'll have to rack your brain a lot longer than the next gamer and while puzzle games aren't my strength i'd like to say i'm competent in solving them and i didn't have too much of a tough time getting through score and there were the occasional moments i wandered and i was lost but as to my original point here with the save system is when you get into combat or when you just want to get off or when you have this issue here where the bugs happen and you want to reload your save, you will lose a ton of progress. And when you are in combat, which we'll talk about how bad that is, and you die, you will have to reload your progress. I mean a lot of it. You will constantly lose progress and scorn and the game just structurally fights against itself. But when you have bugs that are inhibiting your progress in the game, even though it was delayed for a full year, I feel like there was clearly something wrong here that still has yet to be ironed out because it is a buggy game, unfortunately. And that sucks to say because from the outside looking in, when I saw Scorn, I went, 
you know, probably not my style of game, but I'm interested in this one. It gave me that death loop energy of, oh, I have no idea what this is at all. You see a million and one trailers and gameplay previews for it, and you go, all right, I still don't know, like, what's the point? What's the objective? And the developers go, oh, well, let's try to explain it to you. And they never really successfully did so. I had that same thing with Scorn where you just toss your hands and go, all right, I'll give it a shot. And so I did, and I walked away pretty disappointed because it is a game that is wholeheartedly intriguing. Like, I'm not going to sit here and smear the actual product because for me, Scorn, when it worked, I clicked. Unlike what happened with the medium where that was just a boring snooze fest of a horror game. And I put horror in very loose quotes because there was no tension, no atmosphere there. Something like Scorn actually was engaging because of its puzzle nature. But then it starts to lose its identity because about three hours into the game, you're going to get your first weapon and you're going to get a healing object where the game again does not direct you at all on how to use this stuff unless you go and pause the game and hop into the controller menu and see oh there is actually a heal button so you don't walk around and die a ton i don't think sometimes the occasional guidance would hurt the game but i respect their ability to stand in their square and say figure it out yourself it's just that there's no elegant way of doing it it's just oh hit some buttons until you find out like there's no example of like oh this is a thing that heals it just you die and you go, oh, I wish I could heal until you pause the game and realize, oh, it's right there. But it's slight step into combat with this penis puncher gun is to me one of the, the, the dying moments of the game. It's where it really falls apart because it didn't need combat. And I say that very rarely. I like my games with my action, with my activity on screen. But this game had me so absorbed in its atmosphere, in its tension, while the bugs were extremely frustrating and the lost progress was extremely frustrating, the combat just exponentially emphasized that, where I kept dying, I kept getting annoyed, because what happens is your penis puncher gun, we're gonna keep calling it, is this, this little thing that shoots out and it goes into holes and enemies, and if you hit it just right, it goes right deep inside them and you rip it out and boom, they're dead. However, unfortunately it's just spotty so a lot of times you're just punching them like that and just it'll hit them sometimes it won't hit them sometimes you have to get really close your character is weak and if you don't hit that weak spot it takes like five hits to kill them it's frustrating and especially when you die and you lose progress and you have to refine the puzzle pieces and resolve what this maze is it is frustrating but at the same time no matter my frustration there's a part of me that says don't give up on Scorn. That you shouldn't just ignore this game. You should wait for patches. You should wait for them to add maybe a feature like being able to manually save your game or a more frequent autosave system. I wonder if they'll do those types of things. But there are just too many bugs and glitches here for me to say, yeah, go out and spend your time on this. Even if it's a short amount of time, six to eight hours about for, and possibly less if you decide to use a guide, that's nice and all, but Scorn is a game that could have done so much more if it just had some polish and if it just stayed to its original identity. To me, once they started to diverge into combat, it didn't need any of that. It had the story intrigue because, like I said, you are dropped into this world without context. So you are just immensely curious about everything surrounding you. Why are there dead bodies? Why am I wheeling this baby-like creature into a, a scooper and watching it get smushed into bits as it screams bloody murder? It's a very uneasy, adult, thematic experience. I feel like just going in that direction gave it a sense of identity. And when they started going to combat, it's like, oh, they're just trying to answer people's complaints and concerns. And since they didn't do combat well, it just hurts the game big time. And then when you again account for that save system, which I just can't emphasize enough, it hurts the overall experience. There are also frame drops, but this is a pretty graphically intensive game. It looks absolutely beautiful. It truly is a stunner. We're getting a lot of good looking games coming out now, but keep in mind that you should consider your rig. I did test this on my Alienware M17 laptop, which is much better hardware compared to my at-home PC. It ran really well there. Whereas when I tested it on my home PC with 980 Ti, it ran well. I was able to play it in 1080p high settings and get good frame rates on it, but I eventually moved down to medium because I found myself 
having a more stable steady experience there so this game is seemingly optimized well but i noticed even when it was running at its best on my laptop at my pc here that's a 3080 as well as my home one there would just be the occasional stutter and and that was frustrating because again it breaks you out of your experience when nothing's really happening you're just walking around that's it you're just walking around it's like duh, 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 and just how are we stuttering did something happen that i missed i do want to talk about fear factor i think that's really important with horror games i am the biggest scaredy cat you will ever meet when it comes to horror games i am an easy target when it comes to horror games and i am here to let you know it's all gonna be okay this is a very tolerable fear factor now if you have a uneasy stomach and you can't handle gore blood guts a sense of palpable tension then this probably isn't for you but the game never goes surprise and scares the life out of you it very much leans into that uneasiness that something's going on here you'll occasionally hear creatures crawling around and that's where the combat does shine in a very minor way is when i'm walking and it's silent and you just hear the groan of some god knows what being it is that moment of what was that okay i'm ready now and it's why I, I get why they wanted to do combat, but if it was just better, it would have added to the game. But I understand, I understand why they tried to do it, but they, they bit off more than they could chew, it seems. Still, given its overall pace, you know, very puzzle focused, its gameplay structure, which is a lot of trying to solve all these different pieces to this overall labyrinth and put it together and find what connects to what, its lack of direction. I can't see Scorn even in its best state being for everybody. Even if I adored Scorn, I couldn't see myself sitting down and saying to you, the player, oh yeah, this is one you need to go out and see for sure. I think it is definitely a great October game that is worth a look, but right now with the bugs and glitches that prevented me from finishing the game, okay? Prevented me from finishing the game. I can't wholeheartedly recommend it, but I absolutely respect Scorn's atmosphere, its visual design, its audio design. I love how it's all set up as a video game. Again, it's a very artiste video game where I think there is something here. And if they do clean it up, unfortunately we have to wait, but if they do clean it up, you can have something that is pretty cool, that is pretty spooky and just in time for Halloween. So I would wait, pay attention to what developer Ebb Software has to say in the terms of a day one patch, what's going to be there, because there are bugs that will inhibit your progress. They are promising to us reviewers they will be fixed day one, but in a lot of cases, there were new ones that weren't on the list I was provided, and it stopped my progress. So that's unfortunate. That's frustrating. I want to love the game. I'm not going to sit here and smear and slander it because I do think there is something here. It's just not ready right now. So I would say hold your memory space on Game Pass for some other title. Check out Scorn a little bit later. Pay attention to what the developers have to say. And last but certainly not least, don't buy it yet. I think that goes without saying. But that is my review of Scorn, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know what you think of this game in the comments down below. Are you still going to check it out? I'm curious to see what you think. Other than that, be sure to follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below. And a big thank you to all the patrons and all the YouTube members who continue to support the hell out of the content here. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.